There are no villains, save for the ones on the silver screen. And also this goddamn script. It was actually a huge struggle for me to figure out which character to talk about first from Liquor's Recoil, because every single character is so well written that they all deserve a whole video to themselves, but after watching the final episode of this show, I think it'd be a crime if I didn't start with Majima. Why him? Well, Majima is probably the coolest villain in a one core seasonal ever. When it comes to villains in anime, I always find them forced or unnecessarily evil. Like the writers are trying to deliberately make a character that's super irritating and that you can't relate to, and then they're given some sort of super tragic backstory so you can't even hate them without feeling bad. And while I get why this is done from a storytelling perspective, it does not make it any better or any less annoying. And that's why Majima is such a breath of fresh air. He brings a different perspective to fictional conflict, and fights for a very personal reason. There's no good or evil or higher cause, just what Majima believes and how he decides to carry it out. Majima is introduced as this mysterious licorice killing character, very evil and dead set on causing chaos. Originally, he wasn't even interested in the licorice, he just wanted to do something huge that would take down DA and restore balance to Japan. But after Robota shows him a short clip of Sato, Majima instantly switches track and decides that he needs to find out who this girl is. And you can kind of tell from this point on, his motivation is less centered around some higher purpose of balance, and starts becoming much more personal. From the first time Majima clashes with Shisato, we're shown that he's not some disposable three-episode villain. Not only do they meet through him literally slamming into her with a car, he's perfectly capable of matching Shisato in combat despite the previous episodes making it very clear that she's so overpowered that she couldn't even be touched by other skilled licorice. His powers and background are hinted at in their first battle, where he keeps Chisato at a disadvantage by limiting her eyesight. He actually wins in this fight, and instead of choosing to kill her, he asks about her mission, something that really wasn't explained before this point and makes Majima quite a mysterious character. And then he gets his ass kicked for the sake of plot, because of course he does. But that just makes him more obsessed with fighting Chisato, even going as far as telling Robota to focus on her specifically. He also hijacks Robota's theme song in the scene, and I just find it really funny. Majima then periodically shows up in the upcoming episodes as a kind of looming threat, though the most important bit of info about him is shown in an after credits scene of him holding the same pendant that Chisato has, which further sets him up as her equal as he is also what's known as an Allen child. We also get this really nice interaction between the two in Chisato's apartment where the tension is really high at first with Majima pointing a gun at her head while she takes a call from Takina, but then instantly de-escalates when he puts it down and starts talking about movies with her like they're the best of friends. Oh yeah, and then she makes coffee even though he says that he can't stand the stuff. If this scene alone doesn't convince you that this is the best anime to come out this season, I don't know what will. These two are literally just chilling like brother and sister. Anyway, Majima talks about his involvement in the first Radio Tower incident and how Chisato was the one who wiped out his entire squad. He then pulls out his pendant all dramatic like and sets the main conflict in Chisato's character in motion. He is a prime example of the true nature of the Allen Institute, the people behind his eyes and her heart, and does the epic, we're not so different you and I, speech. Okay, I say that sarcastically because the trope is so hella overused, but in this case it's actually really well written. Especially with how the two are just talking like they're besties, Majima and Chisato do essentially operate off the same basic idea, only doing what they want to and following no orders. And then he casually jumps off the side of the building. Man, I love this character. We don't see him for an episode because the writers are too busy making us depressed, and then he comes back and sets off the final arc of the anime, showing up on broadcast all over the city and announcing that he's put guns everywhere where people can find them. He causes such a huge scene that DA is forced to rely on Shisato, who was originally silently agreed upon to be left alone because... She's fucking dying. Using Yoshimatsu as bait, Majima lures Shisato out to the old radio tower and uses this opportunity to battle it out with her. Utilizing the same strategies as the first time they met, he keeps the area dark and limits her eyesight while showing off his excellent hearing by using literal echolocation. It's this scene right here that shows just how strong Majima really is, and why he was chosen by the Allen Institute. The ability to know the location of everything in a room just from clicking his tongue is almost as impressive as being able to dodge bullets at point blank range. Anyway, Takina interferes and the second clash between Majima and Chisato ends in him getting his ass kicked again. But don't worry, because he shows up for one last battle in the final episode, when things are winding down and the Licorice, with the help of Walnut, have successfully pushed back the terrorists and covered up all the chaos. And immediately, there's something different about this final battle. 
Majima cuts off all outside interference and raises the stakes by putting a 1 hour explosion timer on. He explains that he's done doing what he set out to do and that DA is set up for failure sooner or later. The only reason he's still here is to duke it out one on one with the girl who bested him all those years ago in the old radio tower. A battle not for some higher ideal, not for a hostage, and not for the lives of a bunch of people, just between two equally skilled people with different personal values and a score to settle and preferably without talking and butting in before the fight's even over this time. The rivalry between these two characters has been more or less one-sided on Majima's end, but that does not stop him from making it epic as all hell. He's dead set on a fair life and death battle with Shisato, but he holds zero disdain for her at all. The final battle is almost like a fight over the last slice of pizza, but dialed up to 11. I mean, he literally sits down with her and hands her a drink when her heart starts having problems. The two are straight up shooting guns at each other a second ago, and he just decided that it was time to take a break. Their conversation here is probably one of the best ways to end an anime conflict ever. He talks about his beliefs, how he wishes to take down the organizations like DA to protect the world, and how he always sides with the weak. He doesn't see himself as a villain, and as the show went on, he stopped coming across like one. And while I hate the whole trope of villains having a complex about some higher ideal like siding with the weak and how the hero's side is the one in the wrong, this show does that trope right by not centering the conflicts around it. The final battle is so awesome because it shows both sides have very selfish motivations for fighting. Majima is there to settle the score with someone who's his only equal, and Shisato's not there to keep the peace. She only does what she does so that she could remain in the memory of those who are close to her after she's gone. This is where we see that Shisato is also fighting of her own accord in this final battle. Majima is the final person she wants to make an impact on, and with that, the battle resumes. At the end of the day, there is no hero and there is no villain in this final episode. Just like Majima says, the world is filled with a bunch of good people punching each other out over differing ideals. Hell, right before the fight resumes, he asks, who's the hero of justice here? And Shisato legit replies with, the one who doesn't fall off the building probably. It feels like such a funny, goofy line from Chisato, but when you think about it, that's pretty much how justice and evil is defined in the real world. The winner is just, the loser is stamped with the word evil, and the ideals of both are lost to the tides of time. It's a message a lot of fictional media tries to play off of, and fails to do so because there's always a moral just and a moral evil. Since if you design your hero and villain around those morals, of course one would be considered more right than the other. And that's why I love Licorice Recoil so much. Even though there is some higher purpose motivating the events happening in the show, the actual character conflicts within these events have nothing to do with that. The higher purpose is involved in Majima versus DA, and that's about it. Majima has a whole different motivation for going after Chisato, and Chisato doesn't even believe in some moral right or wrong. The show doesn't ask us to pick between who's in the moral right or who's in the moral wrong, because that wasn't even part of the conversation to begin with. I kind of went off track and talked about the show as a whole there, but as for why I think Majima is the perfect villain, it's because he's not a villain at all. He's a bit unhinged, does some morally questionable things, but at the end of the day he's just a dude who does what he believes in. He's not evil per se, and the heroes aren't just. In a world where teenage girls are trained to be killers and government pawns who keep the peace through murder, could you really define a true good or bad? And with that, that's about all I wanted to say. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like and subscribe, it really helps me out a ton. That'll be it from me for now, my name is Sue, and I'll see you next time.